Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Purell, here known as Falling, and today I'm going to talk with you about a little pattern I have found regarding the distribution of prime numbers. Now, this is, or rather, a property of the distribution of prime numbers. This is, I am not stating this is true, um, I am just going to talk about this because I found it very fascinating. Um, I have did done a little research regarding all this, trying to see whether uh, anyone has ever conjectured this before, but um, I have created a little formula. I've also tested it with a little self-coded program, which I'm going to show you later. And so here's the formula. First off, the formula consists of a fraction, and it claims that this fraction will always be a natural number. Um, there are a few con yeah, a few conditions for this formula. So first of on the top side we have the sum from n to m which is sums the numbers n. So we sum all the numbers in the interval from n to m. Um, hereby I, sh I should say that n has a specific format. So n would be uh, x times 10 plus 1 so where x is a natural number. So we could have 1 or 11 or 21 or 23 or 24 and so on. m on the other hand is always n plus 9. So we could say that n is 11 then m would be 20. If n is 141 then m would be 150. On the, at the end of it we add this, this 1 to it which I find uh, very fascinating. Uh, because it seems so random to just add a 1 to it. Um, on the bottom side we have the pi function which is the function uh, which returns all the all the uh, prime numbers up to a specific number. So we say okay how many primes are there until m and how many primes until n. Um, and this is this is not inclusive so what I hope that I got this right. This is trying to say how many prime numbers are in the interval from n to m. So for example between 11 and 20 we have the prime numbers 11, 13 and 17 and 19. So we have four prime numbers. Um, so if we sum numbers from n to m we will always get a very specific result. So for example 1 to 10 at all the numbers together we get 55. If we add 11 to 20, we get 155. So this pattern ca carries on because we always just like increase the numbers all by 10. So we add another 100 to it. And then we add 1 to the end, so we get a number of the format x times uh, 100 plus 56, where x is a natural number. And um, what I'm claiming is that this equation, if you assume that there are prime numbers, because it's division by zero is very dangerous in mathematics, will be a natural number. Um, so this this might seem for some of you a little obvious be at first because if there's only one prime number in this interval then this is obviously going to be true. And since we always have this format of x times 100 plus 56 we always have an even number. So if there's two prime numbers this also holds true. Um, if there's four prime numbers this also holds true because of the fact that 56 is divisible by 4 and 100 is divisible by 4. Now, three prime numbers may give you a little issue because not all numbers that we will get up here will be indeed divisible by 3. Um, there are no five prime numbers in an interval of 10 because there's five even numbers and the number, f the number in the middle, so the 35, 45 and so on, is always divisible by 5. Um, there could be an exception in the interval of 1 to 10 because both 2 and 5 are prime numbers but luckily for us neither 1 nor 9 are prime numbers so we only have 4 prime numbers. This means that those are the only results we do not take into account when there are no prime numbers in the interval. And now to the interesting part. If there's 3 prime numbers in an interval then this interval then, then the sum of this interval plus 1 would not be always divisible by, by 3. 55, 56 divisible by, is not divisible by 3. 156, on the other hand, is. 256 isn't, 356 isn't, but 456 is again. So every third interval is divisible by, th by 6. So that means two-thirds of the interval are not divisible by, six, uh, by 3. My bad. <coughs> So this would mean that if any of those intervals contains three prime numbers, this equation would not be true. 
So I have recently got myself into coding, C++, I hope you can see this right here, and I have coded myself a little program which tries to uh, explain um, or, or check whether this equation is indeed true. This is the program so far. Um, I'm going to tell you a little about the program. So the way it works, it is checks intervals and checks how many primes are in those intervals up to a specific number, the number you can enter up here. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with C++, I will just el uh, quickly elaborate this. The functions that I have is to check if a number is a prime number, which takes an input of a number and returns whether this number is prime or not. The algorithm for this is visible here. This algorithm is confirmed, so this definitely works. Um, then we have sumdk, which is a function that takes the so-called dick account, which checks how many intervals we have checked so far, and um, sums, this is basically what returns this sum up here, which, w with the plus one already, so I uh, take the sum of it and return plus one um, of that sum. We store all the prime numbers in a vector class, uh, vector container, and this goes from all the numbers uh, to to the number we, we enter up here and stores them all in this vector. And then in the main program, this, this definitely also works by the way, everything has been double checked. We then create a loop which goes through all the intervals we have in this... Uh, I have done a lot of optimizing on this. Uh, I used to take around 15 minutes to check the first 100,000 numbers. Right now I am down to around... I have already checked the first 100 in million numbers, by the way, and it has so far always worked. Um, I will, I will probably publish this code. So maybe I have done something wrong. I really hope I haven't, because I've checked all the things. I've checked whether the intervals are correct with entering, uh, l I think, like 50 intervals involved from alpha to see how many primes are in there, and they have always been correct. Uh, I have also checked this, this, and this function. And in the end, it will just check various things. It will check whether at any given point this is not divisible and then it will found a disproof in the interval and then it will print the interval uh, and exit the program otherwise it will always increase the deck account and reset the prime count if we haven't found anything to this number uh, it will say we have no disproof found it would tell us how many intervals we have checked it will tell us how many prime numbers we have used, it will tell us how many numbers we've checked in general, and then the most interesting part is how many intervals did we have that contained three prime numbers, and how many intervals did we have that were not divisible by three. So um, this is currently with 10 million numbers, which will take around a minute. Um, I will just quickly run this here, we have uh, an output that tells us how far we've so far gotten. Um, so once this is done, we will be able to see that it will not have found a disproof. And this is the important thing. I have checked this for a hundred million numbers so far. And I'm not saying this is game changing or anything. I'm not saying this is a very important thing. I'm not saying this is true. I just found it very fascinating and would enjoy it if people that actually have more uh, clues about how mathematics work or higher mathematics would check into this and maybe even give me a feedback which is why I'm making this video right now. Um, so you see all the intervals are being checked now. Um, the prime numbers up to 10 million have been checked. Uh, as soon as in 1 million intervals will have been reached, which is now, we will see the results. So we have 13,615 intervals which contain three prime numbers and 666,667 intervals which are not divisible by three. So we have two-thirds which are not divisible by three, but every one-hundredth interval should contain three prime numbers. So we have a hundred, uh, one million intervals and 10,000 of them, this is rounded, contain three prime numbers. So every one-hundredth of them should not be, uh, should contain three prime numbers, but this is two-thirds. So this take 66 should take 66% uh, of the intervals that uh, have three prime numbers, but it takes 0%. It has not found a disproof where, and we can check this here, some deca, um, one second, um, some deca, so we, we, we sum up everything, percentage, which is the modulo, uh, modulo, modulo, um, uh, operator, so it checks whether, uh, if you, if it's divisible without a rest, uh, by the prime count in the interval equals zero. Then it continues, otherwise it would have told me there's a disproof, and this is what fascinates me about me. 66% is a huge difference when you suddenly get 0%, so 
either I've done something fundamentally wrong in my code, which I do not believe, um, or I have... Yeah, this is actually a true pattern, and I would greatly appreciate if people gave me feedback to this. Um, thank you in advance, and cheers.